Now, the first step to any erotic conquest is to D, demonstrate your value. You move on to E, engage physically. Nurturing dependence. You're gonna wanna nurture that dependence that she's feeling on you now, guys. Which brings me to the second N, neglect emotionally. And that's the perfect time to I, inspire hope. S, separate entirely. D, E, N, N, I, S. The dentist system. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest video podcast. So sit back, relax, and get ready, because... We're going to get nuts. What do I mean by that? We're going to finally do Infinity Gauntlet. As told by toys, baby, this has been the big one. Ever since I started doing this ridiculous concept, people have been saying, when are you going to do Infinity Gauntlet? And I've been saying, calm down. I'll do it when I'm ready because I know that this one might break me because it's going to be massive. Are you ready for it? Here it goes. So you all know the concept of As Told by Toys. I take you through a storyline and I tell you about all the different action figures that you can use to build out a display depicting the events that I'm telling you all about. So if you didn't know, now you know. And Infinity Gauntlet is quite possibly one of the most, well, the biggest stories ever made. I mean, you've got ones like Crisis on Infinite Earths and then later, you know, as the decades would pass, we would get even more grandiose ones. But this was one of, not, not the first necessarily, but one of the first limited series epic mega crossover events because before very often big stories were told in the confines of the existing comics it would be in avengers fantastic four whatever and then marvel were like wait what are we doing we can we can sell more comics and they did and off to the races we ran so let's do it guys six issues a whole bunch of characters this is infinity gauntlet First of all, the front cover to Infinity Gauntlet is pretty epic and iconic in and of itself. We all recognize this Thanos pose right here. And elements of it were taken and sort of incorporated into some of the MCU poster de design. But man, I wish we could have just had a straight up copy live action recreation of this poster with the MCU cast. That would have been really cool. I'm, I'm sure now that I think about it, surely... Some bright spark on the internet must have done that. If they have, let me know, because I haven't seen one, but it would be cool to see that realized. So this story opens, and Thanos has already won. Well, that was quick. He has all of the Infinity Gems in the Infinity Gauntlet. This story begins with the man being omnipotent. So there was a pre show, I guess. <laughs> this, there was the pay-per-view buy-in story in which it was Infinity Crusade. Thanos basically backhanding all the original Stone's owners and claiming them for himself. Why does he want them? Gonna go into that in good time. But first of all, we gotta talk about the big bad himself. Thanos, the Mad Titan. Okay, look, there's one thing you can go to instantly. Boom! Marvel Legends Deluxe Thanos. <laughs> he's on my top 100 greatest Marvel Legends ever video. Why? Because he's just gorgeous. Big, chunky, chonky, brightly colored. They just took this design from the comics and made him three-dimensional. He's gorgeous, but you don't have to stop at Marvel Legends. There are lots of different other versions. If you want what I think is quintessentially the most iconic version of Thanos from this comic in action figure form, the original Select, baby. That, that is the comic book pencils brought to life. Massively limited in many regards, as so many Select figures are. Mainly the articulation is, uh, it ain't great. Even McFarlane would look at it and go, oh boy, do you think you could add some more articulation points there? That's, that's what the older selects are like, and some of the newer ones, to be honest. But if you want to have a classic 1991 Infinity Gauntlet Thanos, you're not going to find a more accurate one. Plus, he even comes with a Lady Death accessory as well, with a human face you can remove to get the skeleton underneath. That is really cool. So that's the go-to Thanos if you want to do a specific... Infinity Gauntlet kind of 
display. Plus, because he's select, he's kind of bigger and chunkier and chonkier too. There's a few other Marvel Legends as well, like a more modern Thanos, a Build-A-Figure one. There's also a select, which is a more modern comic book Thanos, which was my first Thanos, I think. And then, oh, we got a controversial one, but... I don't mind fighting his corner. I'm gonna cut a promo for this guy. In fact, I feel like all of these videos are me cutting a promo to the camera because let's face it, I I don't leave much air in the conversation, but occasionally I'll have a Sid moment and go like, can we go again? No, we're live, pal. So let me tell you about Mezco Thanos. Ah, oh, <laughs> there's a small little island out there in the middle of the ocean. If you get a map, I can show you. It's called Mezco Thanos Island, and only a few people live there. And we just sit around and we play with our Mezco Thanoses and talk about how great he is. And the rest of the world looks at us and goes, that figure looks terrible. But we're happy because we're on Mezco Island where we have our Thanos who we think is amazing. I stand by it. He is a big, hefty Mezco figure with great pleather costume that people say is too baggy, but I don't mind. It looks kind of like a spacesuit. I'm fine with that. And then they do what Mezco do so well where they take the comic book design and then they sort of put their own spin on it. They make it a little bit real worldy, a little bit MCU-ish, but keeping the comic book in influences and it is a wholly unique Thanos design and ah uh, the more I talk about him the more I'm like I should have brought him to Japan with me I miss that guy I really do he just looks great he has all these different heads the main grinning Thanos head looks sick buddy and the infinity gauntlet man it is huge it is a big massive chunky gauntlet that lights up so the gems glow that's why talking about this is how we do it unfortunately and i'll admit it it's not great mezco always have a couple of flaws this being that the infinity gauntlet barely fits on his arm because it's it's so big so i actually use it as a diorama piece i tend to usually have my thanos reaching out for it i have it on a plinth and he's like ah it's within my grasp that looks so wicked his big thick golden shoulder pads too ah Seriously, bro, if I haven't convinced you to go get Mezco Thanos, then you know what? There ain't no helping you. Just get one of the other ones, that'll have to satisfy. But for those of us in the know, come pull up sail and join us on Mezco Thanos Island because we're serving pina coladas 24-7 and it's a good time. But Thanos is not alone. He's there staring at his handiwork, which to be honest, he's just tagged this planet with the word God. I love the fact that his first act as an omnipotent super being is petty vandalism, really. You know, he doesn't written Thanos because he ain't Thanos no more. He's literally God. So he's just spelt that out just to be like, yeah, I like the look of that. And he's got a friend with him as well. It is Mephisto, the Prince of Lies. Because who wouldn't you want to have with you but someone called the Prince of Lies? Like, this guy's not going to betray me, is he? <laughs> no, of course not. Oh, okay, I can rest assured now. The Prince of Lies has told me he won't betray me. Wait a minute. So yeah, that's going to be a bit of an odd pairing. But something else that's odd is the whole Mephisto action figure situation. Because hoo-ha! That was a story in and of itself as well. i got to slow down with my delivery. I'm exhausting myself and we haven't even got off the second page yet. But Mephisto. Well, okay, look, let's talk about what we do do. <laughs> do do. The select Mephisto. He's there. He's out. He's available to get. Not easily. You have to part with a few shekels or spend two years doing a YouTube channel that gets a relatively humble following and someone goes, hey, Dave, have a Mephisto. That's what happened. Oh my goodness, I love our audience. You guys are so grateful. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Mwah! So the select Mephisto, he comes with a whole throne to sit on, which is just so freaking cool. And because, again, it's select, so he's a little bit bigger. He scales taller, which is great. You want a slightly towering demonic prince of lies. It's awesome. He doesn't really have any other accessories, but he doesn't need them because he's got that great cackling face. His hands are these kind of demonic snarling kind of claws his huge big rubber cape kind of tatters and billows in the wind and also the best part of that is even though he's wearing it it's a soft rubber so he can still sit in his Mephisto throne yes this is what we needed this is what we wanted and this is what select gave us ah they, again select sometimes I'll, I'll look at some of those figures and be like select state of your figure mate 
But then I'll also look at some of the monsters and machines they do, and it's like, yes, this, this is where your niche needs to lie. They nailed that Mephisto. Very expensive now, though. And then there's the Marvel Legends Mephisto, which is the action figure that never was. The Ghost Rider Haslab, the Hell Charger. He was going to be one of the tiers. Was he going to be the first tier? Yeah, I, I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's irrelevant now because we never got it. We weren't buying what Hasbro was selling, so therefore they kind of pushed out Mephisto. They were like, look, you can finally get Mephisto. All those rumors about Disney not being willing to make a devil character? Bupkis! Right here! You can get him! But you gotta get the Haslab. And... Pfft, the audience stuck to their guns. We were like, nah, mate, not today. Go peddle that stuff someplace else. We want Mephisto, but we're not going to buy an entire Haslab for it. Not for what you're offering for that price. So unfortunately, even though he looked great, it wasn't meant to be. And there is still only one real quintessential 112 scale Mephisto. And select, God bless you for making him. So essentially, Mephisto is just sweet-talking Thanos. I mean, let's face it, you've got the new nigh-omnipotent ruler of the universe in front of you. You're the Prince of Lies, you're going to want to get on his good side. And of course, eventually usurp him, because that's what the devil's going to do. And Thanos, he goes full Roman reigns. I mispronounced his name there, didn't I? Thanos. Almost Thanos, because look, if you're going to destroy the universe, you got to have fun, am I right? But yes, <laughs> the head of the table has this to say. None shall deny my righteous place in the pantheon of the cosmic gods. I claim my seat at the head of the table. I am the table! Acknowledge me! So now that Thanos has given his mission objective, we go back to the more humble surroundings of Doctor Strange in the Sanctum Sanctorum. He's having a spot of tea, Wong's bringing over the teapot. It's all very domestic, it's quite lovely really. And then all of a sudden, Silver Surfer crashes through the roof with one terrifying message. Thanos is coming. And I didn't realize that this was what was the inspiration for the Hulk doing that in the movies. There you go. Interesting. So Silver Surfer was the original party crasher. And then in the MCU, it's like, in tonight's performance, the role of Silver Surfer will be played by the Incredible Hulk. So, Doctor Strange, easy breezy, lemon squeezy. We've got the best Marvel legend of all time for this character. I know that that's purely subjective, but he was number one on my list and number one in my heart. Because, yeah, it's one of those wonderful Marvel Legends that came out as a regular figure, yet has everything you could ever want. Three different heads, more accessories than you could shake the Wand of Watoom at. Don't know what the Wand of Watoom is? Well, guess what? He comes with that as well. All the swirly-whirly magic power effects too. There are other Doctor Strangers out there. There's a Mezco Doctor Strange as well. He actually looks really pretty, but I've never seen him in person. It's just an enigma to me. But you don't even really need him. If you want to go the extra mile and get a custom-made cloth cape to go on your Marvel Legend, oh -ho -ho, then you, sir, you can invite the Ambassador around to have some Ferrero Rocher because you're living in style. That would be the ultimate Doctor Strange. And then we've got Silver Surfer, and if you want to get your hands on him, all you got to do is buy a $450 Haslab. Boom, he comes with Galactus, gotta love that. Okay, I know there was a Walgreens one as well that came out first, and he was real hard to come by eventually. By the time that Galactus Haslab came out, you know, some people were like, oh man, they're just re-releasing a figure as a tier. But then a lot of people, myself were included, were like, yo, we really need this figure. I'm not paying 60 bucks for a Walgreens Silver Surfer. So there you go. You get him complete with Galactus, who will pop up later. And it's great to have that Silver Surfer. There is also another Silver Surfer from Marvel Legends, which actually is a bit of a hidden gem. The fallen Silver Surfer, who I could do a whole as told by Toy Story just on, on his appearance because it was really cool. However, just the, the figure itself has this beautiful kind of chrome color scheme to him. He looks like a hood ornament, but so gorgeous. He comes with Mjolnir as well. It's a, it's a fun character taken directly from one specific story appearance. But he was my go-to Silver Surfer because also like he, he just looks like the Silver Surfer, just a little bit darker, but just a beautiful, just aesthetically so simple, but so perfect as well. That's a great Silver Surfer. I don't think, top of my head, that there are any other Silver Surfer figures out there. Tell me if I'm wrong. But in the meantime, you've got to go Marvel Legends and they do a decent job. 
So the Silver Surfer tells Doctor Strange that troubles are brewing because Galactus is here, he's got all the Infinity Stones, and he is a huge big simp for Lady Death. That's essentially what this entire story is about, is just Thanos being a simp for death. He wants to court her, he wants to impress her, he wants to win her heart, and she's playing hard to get. So how do you impress death? Well, you're gonna need to cause a lot of death, and Thanos has the right tool for the right job. He's got the Infinity Gauntlet, and he's gonna use that to wipe out, oh geez, I don't know, half the universe. Jake Miller, Ralph Bunker, and Bambi Long. You know who these guys are? Doesn't matter because they're dead. Yep, we got introduced to these kind of douchebaggy type characters, and then a couple of panels later, boom, their car flies over a ravine and they're brown bread. So, uh, welcome to the Marvel Universe, and we hardly knew ye. However, their bodies are going to be used later. A bit of a weird thing, this, but um, it's kind of fun too. We're not going to get action figures of them. So Silver Surfer recounts to Doctor Strange how he and Drax the Destroyer tried to battle Thanos and he was like, nah, I got no time for you. Blip, off to the spirit world you go. And that is where they encounter Adam Warlock. I realized I said spirit world there. You know, obviously I meant the soul world of the soul gem. Duh. <laughs> I'm not an idiot. So yes, he sends them off there. And did I just mention Drax? Oh yeah, that's what encouraged me to finally do this. We're getting a Drax figure, and oh my goodness, he looks like a really good figure. I love how bright, ridiculous, colourful, goofy, chonky, hefty this boy looks. This, this is classic Drax right here. So, yeah, I saw that and I was like, okay, Dave, the universe is telling you, you gotta make this as told by toys video. I'm not gonna get this Drax because I don't have a cosmic display, but if I did, this guy would be everything I want. This is the kind of thing that wins me back to Marvel Legends every now and then. I kind of get tired of them. I'm like, ah, y'all ain't doing much more for me, you know, at the moment. And then I see them release a Drax like this and I'm like, oh shoot, okay, <laughs> there you go. Doing impressive stuff that I like the look of. It's mainly the face sculpts. So animated, so much character in them. That's where Marvel Legends, ah, oh, you, you can reuse bodies occasionally because if you do head sculpts like this that are just so fun so animated it just just wins me over then the ridiculous roidy magoo muscle body that he's got such a great fun drax figure so he and silver surfer trapped in the soul world for a bit and that is where they meet adam warlock and adam warlock we don't have a particular figure for him we do have a marvel legend adam warlock don't get me wrong i used to own him he's actually pretty good but we haven't got classic OG Infinity Gauntlet Adam Warlock. And that's something that I got a little feeling in my tummy that we're going to get from Marvel Legends eventually. He must be pretty high on the docket. If we're getting a classic Drax, classic Warlock can't be far behind. I mean, he did just feature in the cinematic masterpiece that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I realized that when I started saying that sentence, I had a bit of a sarcastic tone in my voice because I was thinking about how rubbish the MCU has been recently. And then I realized that actually Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was really good. But his character in it was a bit, mm, not too sure, this feels a bit shoehorned. So there you go, it was worthy of a little bit of sarcasm. So hopefully we'll get a decent comic warlock at some point. In the meantime though, the current more modern one that exists is, um, he's fine. But that's about it. He does come with a separate head for the Magus though, which is great. So then you can have his evil alter ego as well. <laughs> Granted, you've got to buy the figure twice to do it if you want to have them both on display, but... Ah, that's the game we play with Marvel Legends. Bring it on. So remember those three yahoos I mentioned earlier who plummeted off a cliff and into the water in their car? Yeah, their reanimated corpses are up and walking about. I suppose that's what makes them reanimated corpses as opposed to just corpses. Regardless, they're saying, hey, wow, this body's kind of busted. And yeah, one of them is like full on burnt to a crisp. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty grim, gross and gnarly. But then we start asking, well, what is going on here? And it would seem that, yes, there are three entities that have inhabited these corpses in order to have a physical form on Earth. Who are they? Well, we're going to find out later. So out in space, Thanos is still... He's still trying to win over Mistress Death, who is just giving him the silent treatment. Women call this the silent treatment. And we let them think we don't like it. <laughs> 
but in Thanos' case, he really, he really doesn't. He's he's losing his rag, quite frankly. He's right now. He's here. Okay. He's he's at a nine point five, and he he's getting pretty tired of this act. So he decides to build a shrine to the love and his dedication to Lady Death. It really is quite spectacular. It just needs a nice little fern in the corner to tie the whole thing together. But the problem is, Thanos, dude, bro, you got you should have called me, man. I would have told you how to go about this. You're doing it all the wrong way. Mistress Death, she's not going to be impressed. You got to make her want you, man. You can't be too needy. You're needy, Gonzalez, Thanos. That's it's never going to work. You got to go dating someone else. You got to make her think that you don't need her. Have, have you not heard of the Dennis system? So since Thanos has no idea what he's doing when it comes to courting someone, Death is just not interested. So he's like, hey, look, if that doesn't impress you, do you want to see how I've hideously tortured my adopted daughter? Here's Nebula. And yeah, Nebula's not doing great. She's literally on the cusp of life and death, a mangled, mutilated zombie that Thanos is keeping alive just, just for kicks, I guess. And somehow he thinks that she'll be impressed with this. I d dude, you, I don't even know where to begin with this. But yeah, poor old Nebula. She's she's having a hard time. There's no action figure for comic book Nebula. Nebula blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to edit that. There's no action figure for comic book Nebula yet. I almost botched it a second time. Uh, there's plenty of MCU ones, but you know, this, this ain't the MCU. This is the 616. So that's it. You can get an MCU one, but doesn't really fit the bill properly now, does it? Don't worry, I'm sure we're going to get a 6161 eventually, but for now, we're just going to have to go with the comic book art. So finally, with Mistress Death not being impressed at Thanos hideously torturing his adopted daughter, <laughs> what's the matter with her? He decides, okay, let's do it, and we get the snap. Wow, that was a surprisingly good snap. I normally can't snap my fingers, but... Yeah, there you go, I guess because the camera's rolling, baby. What a professional. So yes, we get the big Infinity Gauntlet snap. Half the population wiped out. The big thing, the big crescendo at the end of the MCU. Th th this happens halfway through issue one of Infinity Gauntlet. Where are we going to go from here? Oh boy, we're off to the races. And in New York, we see Spider-Man swinging through the streets and we see the repercussions of half the universe. Ugh, I don't even want to say the phrase because it, it's kind of crap, but being blipped. And of course, Spider-Man, Spider-Man doing whatever a spider can. The Renew Your Vow Spider-Man is the best Spider-Man, in my opinion, out there. There are tons, though. The Mafex, hoo-ha. The Mafex Spider-Man was like the go-to greatest quintessential, quintessential, I'm not going to redo that, comic book Spider-Man for the longest time. And then he was so hard to get hold of. Then we had Pizza Spider-Man, who was terrific. And only recently, Mafex re-released their comic book Spider-Man in a lighter color scheme. And he looks super pretty as well. I was tempted to pick him up. I could spend hours just listing every Spider-Man figure, but I'm not gonna do that. We've only got so much time, but from Revoltech to Mezco, Mafex, all points in between, you got a lot to choose from. Uh, I'll just go with that. The one that I'm looking forward to and waiting for the most is classic Spider-Man from Mezco, but Lord only knows when that's finally gonna come out. And there's a brand new Revoltech Spider-Man coming out. It's like the Spider-Man International with the glowing green spider. You know what? Already I'm getting off on the spider tangent. Just get your Renew Your Vow Spider-Man and have done with it. Or the retro, or the Amazing Friends 3-pack, or the animated one. Gosh, there are a lot of Spider-Men. So we see all across New York, half the people have disappeared in some quite harrowing scenes. Like, you get the classic woman going like, My baby! Because, yeah, I mean, could you imagine? That's, that's pretty intense. And we go over to the Avengers, and we see Captain America doing his thing, and of course, people around him, Cersei, I think, she vanishes. Uh, but Cersei, though... We're getting a Cersei figure. I almost forgot about her. We've only got pictures of her. She's not actually in hand yet, and I don't think there are any other Cersei figures out there. But hey, we're getting a Cersei. How about that? She comes with Black Knight. That's going to be a real nice set. Why is it a two-pack? I don't know. Hasbro love two-packs. There you go. But one figure that didn't come in a two-pack was the 20th anniversary Captain America, who is perfect for this Captain America, this wonderful bright blue colored 90s uh, star spangled man with the plan. This is the one you want, this is the one you need, and this is the one you can get. One of the best Marvel legends ever. How do I know that? Because I'm pretty sure he was number two on my 100 greatest Marvel legends ever made list. That's how you know how good this figure is. But again, you don't have to go 
with Hasbro. My actual go-to Captain America for my big Galactus display is the Mezco Captain America. I love that guy with the cloth goods, all the little extras and accoutrements, his belt, his pouches, his flask, his grenades. He's got so many cool little bits. Oh, I really love that cap. There's a Revoltech cap to give you kind of an anime looking kind of Captain America. There's a Mafex one that's gonna be coming out in the next couple of years. They've sort of hinted at him. We've got Iron Man, we've got Thor, Cap's gonna be on the way. So there's a few to choose from. And of course there are older Marvel Legend ones as well, like the 80th anniversary or the Cap Wolf, the Retro. You're, you're spoiled for choice, just like with Spider-Man, but I mean, really, come on. 20th anniversary Captain America, that's the way to go. And speaking of upcoming figures, we go over and see Nick Fury. No, not the Sam Jackson Nick Fury, but the OG. The good old cigar chomping, eye patch wearing, salt and pepper in the hair, Nick Fury. And he's just puffing away doing his spy thing. And if you want to recreate him doing his spy thing, well, you can do with an old Nick Fury. But better yet, hopefully, if rumors, innuendo, and scuttlebutt is to be believed, there might be a new Nick Fury coming out next year, maybe in some kind of a S.H.I.E.L.D. 3-pack? That's just on the rumor mill. Nothing confirmed about it, but I think, I think it might be happening. Prove me wrong, Hasbro. Prove me wrong. But if you don't want to wait for that and play your cards and all that kind of thing, you can get the original Nick Fury. I used to have him, but whew, he was a shaky-bakey boy. Those joints were just loose all over. He was like a baby's rattle. But he was kind of fun, so you can get him to fill that gap. That's the only other Nick Fury out there. I mean, there's an old Toy Biz one, which actually was great. He had a jetpack and it served as a diorama base. That was, oh man, that was really, that was a great figure. They, they really do not make them like that anymore. If they did, the diorama would probably be cardboard. Yeah, they definitely don't make them like that anymore. And you know it's the 90s. Why? Because we've got the Smart Hulk having a beer in a bar like a good old working man does. But we don't have a Smart Hulk action figure, which is kind of a shame and sort of surprising, but I'm sure it'll be rectified one of these days. I love Smart Hulk because that's my 90s Hulk. And I'm not talking about the MCU Smart Hulk who's just like... What, what are you doing with that? He's just he's just kind of a doofus. You know, the, the, the smart Hulk in the 90s, he was a cool character. He, was re he, he hadn't been nerfed so much. He was still kind of a badass. But he does have some funny leaps of logic. Like half the people in the universe disappears and he goes, this is definitely the work of the Abomination. Really? Do you, you, you think the Abomination made half the life in the universe disappear? That's, um... That's, that's stepping up his game a little bit. Maybe Smart Hulk isn't the best name for you. Regardless, the closest Marvel legend to this sort of look, I think, is the San Diego Comic-Con Hulk, who has a kind of a pudding bowl sort of haircut. But even, even that's a push, really. My favorite Hulk action figure? Select, baby. You could argue he's a little bit big, but then again, you know, the Hulk is a giant rage monster who kind of does tend to get bigger depending on how mad and angry he is. That's something that was only really established and used in the Ang Lee, Ang Lee movie, which was terrible, but I'm still going to go with that logic anyway to justify him being a little bit bigger than he should because the actual Select Hulk is just, ah, oh, he's so good. Throw on that white rubber shirt as well to break up all the green. He looks amazing. What white rubber shirt? Oh yeah, the one that came with the 80th anniversary Hulk, which is the best Marvel Legends Hulk. Not the only one though, of course. We recently got the 20th anniversary Hulk, who's also fantastic. Head sculpts, the mileage is gonna vary depending on your own personal taste. A lot of people don't like the big, thick, pickle rick lips that he comes with. It's like, it's a bit of a odd stylistic choice, which I do agree with. But still, he is a fun figure, especially if you're just an inbox collector. He looks great in the bubble packaging. Ah, beautiful. Nonetheless, though, you've got plenty of Hulks to choose from, except for an actual smart Hulk. Then we go over to Saturn's Moon Titan, where we get some of the more all-powerful cosmic beings having a little chat about what the heck just happened. Because it wasn't just half the life on Earth. No, it was half the life in the universe 
that was just wiped out. So we get a couple of characters that we do have some nice action figures for. First of all, we got Fire Lord. Yes! When Galactus was approaching our shelves, Hasbro started hitting us up with a few heralds, one of which was the much requested Fire Lord. And this guy, he's kind of a basic figure in as much as it's just a plain body with the paint on there. But what does sell him and set him to one side quite a bit are the lovely fire effects. He is incredibly bright and colourful. He really does, in a flight stand, just, just look so bold on your shelf. Really lights it up. So even though it's basic, the flamey wamey flashy kind of translucent effects, that's always going to win me over. So he actually makes for a really, really nice action figure. Drax is there as well. We've spoken about him. And then we've got Star Fox, who is a character that... I don't know if we're ever going to see an action figure form, maybe, but his powers are a little bit well, problematic, I guess. He's, he's a cosmic diddler, basically. He has these pheromones that let him essentially roofie people. That's, that's it. He has the, the, these pheromones that are alluring and can make people lust after him. And it's like, this is not really kosher. Star Fox, I, I see what you're doing. Uh, we need to shame you for it, quite frankly. So yeah, I'm not sure if they've changed his powers at all. Or they've updated or modified him in the modern comics. If they have, let me know. I haven't read a wiki on him recently. But I just don't think that necessarily that's going to be a type of character or angle that they're going to lean into. Although he did appear in The Eternals. Does, does anyone remember The Eternals? No. 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 Yes. I mean, I mean, no, no. Nope, me neither. Little spoiler for the end credit scene of Eternals, but I mean, come on. So yeah, they're all hanging around basically going, what the heck just happened? And they all essentially agree, yeah, it's bloody Thanos, wasn't it? So we go back over to our three reanimated corpses and their bodies are changing and mutating into forms that actually befit what the entities were who took them over. I think that's what's happening. And this is where I think it's Pip the Troll, right? Right? The short little fat guy? Yes, he becomes Pip the Troll, I think. I'm reading this in real time. I did read it years ago, but I, 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 I forgot that T minus five minutes after I finished it. So they're kind of morphing into their more real appearances. And they're having a little chinwag, and then the lady vanishes. Yep, she just got blipped. So Pip kind of panics. He runs into the other room, only to be confronted by a cocoon. That was once his other companion. And he's like, wow, this, this is getting weird. So the second issue opens with a beautiful splash page of all of the New York heroes essentially just trying to help out in the chaos and the panic of half the world disappearing. And we get a couple of characters who have just recently joined our shelves. One of them is the, er is it Eric Masterson Thor? Beardy Thor. Destroyer 2-pack Thor. That's that's the Thor. I'll just call him just Destroyer 2-pack Thor. Is it Eric Masterson? I think it might be. My Thor knowledge isn't great. Exactly what part of your knowledge is great, Dave? I don't know. I just make videos and I talk a lot about stuff and some people watch it. And for that, I thank you. So we've got this Destroyer 2-pack Thor who is kind of fine. It's great to have another another thought. That's always good. And he is kind of big and chunky. And I do like the different helmet design. That That's kind of cool. But that's all he really has going for him, I feel. The 80th anniversary thought. Oh, be still my beaten heart. That is, that is the best Thor you can get your hands on. I've got the Mafex Thor behind me. But as I said recently in my review of him, he's... He's, he's kind of lacking, you know, he, he's okay, but as everyone on the planet seems to say, he is small, he's fine, he's too small, he's just, he's too small for Thor, he really is, he's got some nice aspects to him, but he's, he leaves you wanting, he really does, if you want a quintessential classic Thor, you gots to go with the 80th anniversary Marvel legend, until they bring out a new one, oh, but of course there are other Thors as well, I've had quite a few other Thors, whether it's from uh, Select or one of the older Marvel Legends, there are some great ones out there. But this one specifically, boom, you can get the exact look from Marvel Legends in the Destroyer 2 pack. So if you're building Infinity Gauntlet, that's 100% the one that you need. Then there's also White, all White Vision is there too. Hot off the pages of West Coast Avengers. He makes an appearance and we've got him. We've got the retro carded Vision, all decked out in beautiful, brilliant, shining, sheening white. He does look striking. We need a classic vision. We need another classic vision because 
that one that they released several years ago is whew, he's pretty expensive now so if they could do a new one of him in his yellow and green that would be great in the meantime though for this story he's all white by me and he's all white on your shelf so yeah that's a good one and then the other character featured is green she hulk in her avengers attire and for some reason hasbro seemed to just point blank refuse to give us that figure they're, they're being real stubborn in this regard they're like nah i don't think you want her enough hasbro hasbro are being lady death and we're thanos going like please just 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 give us the she hulk we all want and hasbro are like no unbelievable so yeah we've got a couple of she hulks we've got the gray she hulk in her ripped clothes we got the green she hulk in those ripped clothes we do have the she hulk that i'm asking for from long long ago in this a force five pack but i mean she's old and hard to come by and you know even if you wanted her you don't really because it's a very old figure so give us a brand new one hasbro come on we're literally sat here with our money going give us a reason to give it to you and then we get a brief appearance from Quasar, who I won't linger on too much, but he's another spacefaring cosmic being. He's going to get involved in this whole scuffle and brouhaha, and we got a figure of him too, looking kind of like Robert Redford. Very dashing, but that's all there is really to him. I think he might pop up later, but I'm not going to give him too much time because this video is already going to be an absolute monster, and there's more figures to talk about. Then speaking of figures who we won't linger on for too long... Doctor Strange has a little conversation with a certain giant green bipedal man bull, aka Rintra, aka one of the most useless builder figure Marvel Legends we ever had. Why? Because they got about 30 seconds of screen time, which to be fair, is about 25 seconds more than Cyborg Spider-Woman got, and she got her own deluxe figure as well. What is up with some of these choices? Still, if you wanted to be a completionist, you can get yourself the Rintra Builder figure, which probably is not worth very much money. I don't know how many people are desperate for a Rintra, and recreate all of Rintra's amazing scenes from Multiverse of Madness, like, nope, I got nothing. So yeah, uh, Rintra pops up, and there's a figure for him, so there you go. And finally, of course, with all of these crises occurring, there's going to be opportunity. And no one enjoys a crisis more than Doctor Doom. So we get a nice little Doctor Doom splash page where he's just in his castle in that Latveria going, hmm, strokey metal chin. I could probably benefit from this somehow. Don't know how yet because I don't know what's happening. But, but when I do, it will be time for Doom. And it's always time for Doom on your shelf. Which one do you want? I mean, obviously, there's my favorite one, which is the Retro Doom, who is just B-E-A, beautiful. But a lot of traditionalists, or a lot of people who just prefer a more modern, badass kind of look, you'll prefer the Super Scroll one. You know what? I respect that, because <laughs> arguably, like, he does just look plain more badass than the Retro one. I like the brighter colors on the Retro Doom, so that's always going to be my go-to until Mezco one day finally release their Doctor Doom. I think I think we're still going to be waiting a long time. I mean, Mezco are in no hurry. They, they have my money. <laughs> not that I'm annoyed about it, though. But eventually, when we get the Mezco Doom, I don't see how that would not be the ultimate, incredible, perfect, 112th scale Doctor Doom. But you know what? If you want a more budget-type priced one, oh my goodness, Marvel Legends with their Doctor Dooms, they knocked it out of the park. Both of those guys, absolutely fantastic. So Thanos decides that he wants to have a little bit of a family reunion. So he teleports Star Fox, the space diddler, over to his death shrine where he, Mephisto, and Lady Death are hanging out. And that's also where I realized that Nebula is not his adopted daughter in the 616. She is his granddaughter, right? I'm still putting all the puzzle pieces together as we go. And instantly, Star Fox starts getting on Thanos' nerves, as brothers tend to do. Fortunately, Thanos has the ability to do, well, anything he wants. So he gives Star Fox the whole Agent Smith treatment, and all of a sudden, he doesn't have so much to say. So we go over to Captain America, giving a full tally list of all the heroes who have disappeared, and <laughs> it, would be, it would be ridiculous of me if I covered every single character that he lists. That would, that would take forever. Only a, only a complete moron would do that. 
So we kick it off with Archangel, who has a beautiful Marvel legend, but not as beautiful as the Beast with his incredible cloth coat. Then we have Black Cat from the Spider-Man Retro Wave. Black Panther, we got so many different versions, including a brand new one that many people really love. Then we got Box, who I have no idea. I don't think we've ever had a Box figure, nor maybe will we ever. Then we got Dagger, who yes, we do have Dagger. And also we've got a classic Daredevil. Then there's Diamond Lil. Never heard of her. I don't think we've got a figure either. Then Firestar. Yes, we've got a Firestar figure. Then Guardian, who I think came in the Alpha Flight box set. Then we got Hawkeye, who we're getting a brand new version of with his Sky Cycle, which looks incredible. Then we got the Manny Hercules, who actually is one of my favorite ridiculous bonkers new Marvel Legends figures. Then we got the Human Torch, who yes, we have a couple of versions of him. Then Iceman, who of course we got a couple of versions of him as well. Well, same to be said for the Invisible Woman, and definitely not to be said for Makari. Never heard of that guy. Then we got Marvel Boy, who I, I don't know which version of Marvel Boy this is. Same to be said with Marvel Girl. However, of course, we all know Mr. Fantastic, and yep, we got loads of Reed Richardses. Then there's Night Thrasher from the New Warriors. We've got him. North Star. I do not believe we have a North Star. Then Power Man, we're getting a Power Man very, very soon, hopefully with an Iron Fist coming as well. Then we got Puck, we do have a very small, very old Puck. Then also we got Quicksilver, who came in the Family Matters 3-pack. We got Sasquatch, a builder figure Sasquatch. Cersei in a different costume, we're getting in a 2-pack with Black Knight. Shaman, I'm guessing we got in the Alpha Flight box set, I think? Then Sweet Aunt Petunia, we got the Yancey Street original, it's the thing. Then we get US Agent, yes we've got him. Vindicator, I'm pretty sure we do have a Vindicator. We've got the Wasp, and then there's... <laughs> Windshear? <laughs> Who? State of your gimmick, mate. Winch no, not even Winchier's mum knows who Winchier is. <laughs> and don't at me in the comments. Oh my god, Dave, I can't believe you don't know who Winchier. Winchier. No, no. <laughs> Jog on. <laughs> I can't believe anyone even noticed that he was missing. And while we're with the Avengers, we see Thor having a little moment of contemplation to himself, going, "Should I tell them that I'm not actually the Thor, Thor that they know?" Which makes me think that, hey. I guess that is Eric Masterson, right? Look at Dave knowing something about something. Don't worry, it's not going to last. Then we travel across the Rainbow Bridge to see Odin having a council with all the god member type people. All the Norse god type dudes. I'm pretty sure that's what the sign on the on the clubhouse says. All the Norse god type dudes. And they actually, they look really cool. All sat around the big old table looking very grand and regal. And Odin, we don't have a classic comic book Odin. There was an Odin builder figure, an all-father type one. But honestly, I'd love to see a proper retro, big, bright, colorful, overly costume designed comic book Odin that would be a really fun figure and since we're getting all these different Thors and we've got the destroyer it would make sense for them to do Odin I I wouldn't be surprised if we do see him at some point but uh I wouldn't I wouldn't place money on it because Marvel Legends man you just you can't predict what they're gonna do now snap back to reality and we've got Pip the Troll in his ho hotel room. Hotel, motel, holiday inn, I don't know. And he's fully morphed his body into Pip the Troll. And this is a little obscure cosmic character that a lot of people I know have been asking for and hoping for. So it wouldn't surprise me if at some point we get an Infinity Gauntlet 2-pack with maybe him and a classic Warlock or some kind of combination. Because a Pip the Troll figure, that, that would be kind of fun. I'd like to see that. And the plot thickens as the cocoon that was in the bedroom, yeah, it's hatched open. And it's hatched open not a minute too soon because Doctor Doom has made his first power play going over to the residence of Stephen Strange where the Silver Surfer is still lying on the couch having a cup of tea. I guess, I guess Thanos kind of did a number on him, which of course allowed Doom to come in and essentially wreck shop. So the, the Doom bots, they've, they've got Doctor Strange and Thanos has Silver Surfer in his grasp and it's all looking pretty bleak for the good guys. Doom is clearly going to like take control of this situation and try and use it to his best advantage when all of a sudden, kablamo! Adam Warlock smashes through the wall with Pip the Troll by his side. It was him who was inside the cocoon and he's in full-on 
Warlock Regalia actually making a hell of an entrance and looking really cool and making me say once again, Hasbro, as I bang my fist on the table, give us a classic Warlock. In the meantime, Thanos is still just kind of frustrated because even after blipping out half the life in the universe, Mistress Death still isn't that impressed. He's taking his frustration out on Star Fox and Nebula who are just having... They're just having the worst day, man. They're just... Though, though, those guys are not having a good time. Also, people not having a good time with the residents of New York because now everything's just crumbling. We're getting some natural disasters. Buildings are falling down. Dogs and cats living together. And Cloak, who's now lost his dagger, is just there watching it going like, geez, today sucks. What doesn't suck is the Cloak action figure, though. From Marvel Legends. Did you like that little segue there? And when you pair him up with Dagger, they make a really good combination. They're a great-looking pair. His Cloak is actually kind of translucent, which is really nice. It It's just a solid plastic piece, so it just sits like a shell over him. But, I mean, hey, it still looks pretty good. So that's a nice little Marvel Legend there. And amidst all the crumbling and the chaos, we get Wolverine down on the street, just trying to help people out because... That's what heroes do. And Wolverine, yeah, there's a there, there, there's a couple of action figures you could you could choose for Wolverine. I'm I'm not gonna run through them all. We, we this video is already well over an hour, probably. I don't know. Once I've edited it down, maybe not. But either way, trust me. Uh, judging by the how sweaty my butt is, I, this I've been here for well over an hour. You didn't need to know that. Let's move on with the story. So in his arrogance and frustration, Thanos begins to kind of poke the bear a little bit, maybe in a way that he shouldn't do. He's like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of irritated, I'm going to destroy a planet. You know what, pinky flick, bam, look at that, you see that planet in the distance, boom, gone. Guess who was about to eat that planet? Yeah, Galactus, and he ain't happy. Alright, we're bringing the big G into this story, and oh yeah... <laughs> we got a Galactus figure. Maybe I shouldn't linger on this guy for too long because what am I going to tell you that you don't already know? Well, I mean, there are several Galactus figures actually, but I mean, really, there's there's only one real Galactus figure, the Builder figure, the Big Potato, the Hot Tamale, the crown jewel of any Marvel Legends display. This thing is just... It, it's everything I could have ever wanted for an action figure. And honestly, I think Hasbro kind of shot themselves in the foot in the most wonderful way because... You're never going to top this. As as a HasLab project, I might have said build a figure before. I'm not going to go back and check. It's a HasLab. We all know this. Could you imagine if it was a build a figure? That would have taken um, quite a few pieces to make. This thing is just... It's, it's not something that you can just replicate with any other character. Like, you've done it. There are bigger characters in the Marvel Universe, but... Who's going to want to spend 500, 600 bucks on something bigger than Galactus? Like, you could give me a Celestial, but I don't want a Celestial. I've got Galactus. He's big enough. I still need room for a couch and a TV in my house when I eventually one day have a house. You've got to dream a dream, okay? So the HasLab Galactus, oh, it's just so good. Everything about him is just incredible. But also, if you wanted to go way back back into time, there is the Toy Biz Galactus, who actually set the standard for what a 12-inch scale Galactus could be. Yeah, he's not huge and dominating, but then again, for 20 years ago, yes, he was huge and dominating, and he, he was a builder figure as well. Really incredible, showed what could be done with the builder figure concept. And also, there's another Galactus. There's a Marvel Universe Galactus, who I think is a little bit more modern. He kind of bridges the gap. I mean, it's still a huge leap up to the builder figure, but still, the Marvel Universe Galactus, people kind of sleep on him. But until the builder figure was, <laughs> until the HasLab was announced, I'm not redoing that. That was like my Galactus that I really wanted to get my hands on. But luckily, the HasLab was announced before I dropped the money on him. But he looks really great as well. I saw one for sale in Nipponbashi in Osaka recently. And I was like, ah, that's kind of a cool little curiosity to see in person. But yeah, Galactus, ah, he's always going to be the centerpiece of your collection. That HasLab, still one of the best things ever made. So Thanos' kind of psychic wave that he sent out, destroying Galactus's breakfast and causing earthquakes on Earth, that's... That's causing all sorts of problems, actually. Iron Man is out in space, and that hits him and sends him careening down to Earth. Luckily, his suit recovers, and he's okay. Which suit? I'll tell you which suit. The Marvel Legends retro-carded Iron Man suit. Yeah, one of the first 
retro carded figures was this Iron Man armor design, which actually like you don't necessarily want it in your collection because it looks very, very chonky and very kind of blocky and not really great. But honestly, as a standalone piece for your Hall of Armor, it actually looks like it would be pretty good because it looks exactly like this one in the comics. So it's actually kind of a perfect design in that regard. And as he falls back to Earth and catches himself, he kind of meets up with a couple of the Avengers. There's the Scarlet Witch flying a Quinjet, which might be a future HasLab. That's something I was thinking. They could go the vehicle route, you know, the, the Hell Charger we didn't bite on, but what if they went even bigger? and gave us an Avengers Quinjet. That, I don't know, people might go for that. It's just speculation. Regardless, there was Scarlet Witch in there, and there's a retro Scarlet Witch figure, which I'm a big fan of. I, I really like that figure. They had one in the Family Matters 3-pack that was kind of a darker color scheme, and then they did the retro one, which was much brighter, with, with brighter face painting, paint, you know what I'm trying to say. I was, I was trying, trying to say brighter paint on the face without saying face paint like she's Sting or the Ultimate Warrior, you know. Uh, but yeah, she looks really, really great. And there's also Human Torch flying around there. I touched on him briefly as well. Any action figure like the Torch who's just full on translucent prettiness. I'm always going to love that. So thanks to this psychic shockwave, all sorts of natural disasters are befalling Earth. Tidal waves, volcanoes, and enough that Namor, the Submariner, gets in on the action because it's all going to pot underwater as well. So he's swimming around trying to save people and we got a couple of nice Namor action figures too. Now I'm realizing this is why I didn't do the Infinity Gauntlet sooner because there's so many freaking action figures to talk about. But we do have classic Speedos Namor. And he looks great. He really does. Only thing I don't really like about him too much is he has very thick ankles. I feel like they're not really a swimmer's ankles. I feel the body itself is all a bit too thick and solid. He needs to be a bit more lithe, like an Olympic swimmer. But that would have just taken a whole new sculpt, which, you know, you weren't going to do. So it's okay. I don't mind, though, because the figure itself is great with two different heads, a beardy look, a nice huge big trident. It's a really cool Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman, what am I saying? <laughs> A really cool Submariner. And then also they do have a more modern Marvel Legend of him as well, where he's in more of like the wetsuit kind of gear. So both of those are cool. And we also see Namorita as well. She's saving people from a tidal wave. I'm just, look, I, I really hope that if I'm ever in one of those sort of natural disaster type situations, I don't do like Hollywood people do where they just stare at it and just go, ah! I'm like, at least try running. I mean, I, you, I probably couldn't outrun a tidal wave, but I'd give it a go. I, just, I, I don't think I would freeze. I think I'm more of a more of a flight than a fight type person, but definitely not a freeze person. If those are the three F options, there might be a fourth one. But if I'm on my own, then it's not really an option. Regardless, Namorita shows up, and we don't have a Namorita figure, but we should do. We need more new warriors. Go on, Hasbro. You can add that one to the list. So, issue 3 kicks off with a beautiful, another beautiful 90s ensemble splash page. This, this is my childhood Marvel Universe. Oh, you know, back in the day when, when heroes could be heroes? Yeah, there they are. Those are the good guys, including X-Factor Cyclops. Well, I, I call him X-Factor Cyclops. White Cross Cyclops. Scottish Cyclops. If you want to go in that kind of direction, it's like the Scottish flag. I'm so... Apologies to all Scottish people watching that I'll, 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 I'll never do another Scottish impression again. Normally I defend my impressions, but that was that was hard to watch. Regardless, we have a couple of X-Factor Cyclopses. There is a retro carded Cyclops, which Marvel Legends did a pretty good job with. You know what I particularly like about it? If I recall correctly, which I think I do, he has the Optic Blast blast effect. You know, the one that should come as standard with every Cyclops. It, it doesn't, but it should do, because it looks awesome. And that's a really great little Cyclops figure there. Just a shame that Marvel Legends are doing their usual shtick, where they gave us one figure from a group, and then they're like, yeah, we're done now. And the rest of us are going, look, do you know the rest of the team? Can we not? Like, nah, nah. What, what about Marvel Girl, Iceman, Beast? Look, you got Cyclops, all right? Be happy, okay? <sighs> Also, there's a Mafex version of this Cyclops as well. And of course, Mafex is Mafex if you if you like Mafex style, which I know a lot of people do. I know I do, as they're becoming more prevalent for me to get hold of over in this part of the world. I'm I'm being won over more and more to Mafex, except for Mafex Thor, who ugh, <laughs> go see the review. But yes, there's a Mafex Cyclops in that X Factor costume as well. And he gets a little bit of shine in this issue. 
infinite power on display, an ego gone wild, depraved creativity. If that doesn't sound like model behavior, I don't know what does. Thanos is, well, I think he's kind of bored. He's just flexing his godlike powers now. He's like, hey, what what can I do with all this power? I'm just gonna make another shrine to myself. That's the problem. Once you once you win, where do you really go from there? Well, actually, that's why Mephisto is still sticking around. He's still working his machinations, and he's like, yeah, Thanos, wow, this is this is amazing. If only Mistress Death loved you. Yeah, he's he's a savage. Now, issue three is very sort of just dealing with drama, basically. There aren't big story revelations. It's just the Earth is going to hell in a handbasket because it's being rocked with all of these natural disasters being caused by Thanos' shockwaves and power emanating. Basically, Thanos is the noisy neighbor upstairs. That's exactly what the actual Infinity Gauntlet story is. Thanos is having a house party up in space and it's causing the roof to shake on Earth. And they're like, hey, what are you doing up there? So we're getting all these great hero moments of the street level Marvel characters just dealing with these disasters, helping people escape, a real search and rescue kind of thing, which is great because when you've got these cosmic stories, it's like if you're not Thor or the Silver Surfer or Doctor Strange, like how are these characters really useful? Well, they are. They're always useful on the ground. So we get some nice character moments like Black Costume, Black Widow, one of those blacks was redundant, I guess. Black Widow doing some search and rescue, helping people from collapsing buildings. And I mean, come on, Black Widow. <laughs> yeah, we've got we've got the black costume Black Widow. Again, not redundant. But also we've got the new, the new highly articulated one, which to be honest is an ab crunch. But <laughs> that's Hasbro patting themselves on the back, like, look at us, we're giving you an ab crunch. That's highly articulated. Actually, dude, it it's acceptable is what it is. But I'm very excited for this figure. I have pre-ordered it because also when you see something touted as, ah, the new hot thing that we're doing, it's like, how much is this going to cost us? Well, actually a, a reasonable price. It's a, a standard Marvel Legend price pretty much. Maybe it's like an extra dollar or something. But you get so much with this set. Count them, three different heads. All of them with a different style and look. It's not just minor changes, but big different era looks for Natasha. That, oh, that is fantastic. That's what we want. That's the package that we're after. Plus all the different weapons and hands and accessories. That is a gorgeous Black Widow. Cannot wait to get my hands on this. Genuinely, she might be right up there with one of the best Marvel Legends of the year when she hits. This is all speculative though, so come on Hasbro, don't let us down. So the main Marvel Universe heavy hitters like Captain America, Doctor Doom, Doctor Strange, there's a couple of Doctors in the house along with Eric Masterson, Thor, they're all like thinking, hey, okay, we need to bring this fight to Thanos because this can't keep going on. Don't make us call the cops, Thanos. So Doctor Strange opens a portal and we, we get a bit of a no way home. Everyone blipping through the portal and giving a little roll call as they join the team. We've got Iron Man in his retro Iron Man suit, which at the time is just the Iron Man suit, I guess. I don't know how much time has to pass until you're retro. Then we've got the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Joining him is brown costume Wolverine. Yes, the brown costume Wolverine. There he is. You can't have a crossover without the old knuckle head. And this card back retro style brown costume Wolverine. He's a nice figure, man. Not easy to get hold of, but if you can do. Yeah, he looks the bee's knees with the nice cowl around his neck, the unmasked head. He's a, he's kind of, once you've got the yellow and blue tiger stripe, that's the other sort of essential Wolverine you want to get your hands on. And Mafex just helped us out recently as well by doing that brown costume variant. He does look really nice. Me personally, I'd love to get hold of the yellow and blue Mafex, but hoo-ha! That's expensive. That's hard to come by. I'm guessing they might be releasing one of these days, but until then, your Marvel vs. Capcom looking Mafex Wolverine, I'm going to have to hold out for that. But then again, I think I've got enough Wolverines. It, but is it possible to have enough Wolverines? I don't know. We might find out. Then we got Drax coming through, joined afterwards by Fire Lord, and then Nova, more cosmic entities. And Nova, we got ourselves a Marvel legend of Nova, and he's it's fine. That's about it. That's all I can say. That's one of those more kind of bare bones type Marvel Legends. I was happy to see him because we have a more modern Nova, like Nova Core type Nova. But this is a New Warriors Nova. This is 90s Nova. 
So I was really glad that we got an action figure of him, but yeah, there's not really much to him. It's just the kind of painted buck, minimal details, and a head that's like, eh, it's okay, but nothing really to write home about. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah that, that was kind of a, a wave filler, I think. But it shouldn't be a wave filler. Nova's a, a big deal, and it would be nice to get the rest of the new warriors. But now I'm just griping and belly aching. Let's move on with the story. And then joining them, we have Namor, who we've discussed earlier, and also Cloak. I was about to say Dagger. Why would I even start with Dagger? The names are Cloak and Dagger. This is what happens when I overthink things. And I just realized that the Cyclops who walks through the portal, not exactly the X-Factor Cyclops I was talking about. He's got a different kind of yellow and blue color scheme. So I was close in my defense. And I can't remember if the one on the comic cover actually was more of the white one. And maybe they changed it halfway through. Too late to go and check now, but there you go. This is a slightly different looking Cyclops. And finally, the Hulk is just, he's being the Hulk. They opened the portal to invite him through and he's like, no. I'm not coming. Like, why? The, the, the entire universe and all of existence is at stake. Why aren't you coming? Because you guys were mean to me. <sighs> that was literally it. They're like, yeah, the Hulk's not coming. He's just in one of his moods, I guess. But then actually he does acquiesce and he walks through the portal and he's like, okay, well, you, 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 you owe me, okay? Everyone else is doing this because that's what heroes do, but <laughs> when, when's it going to be my time, all right? Just give Hulk a break. So instantly, Doctor Doom starts a ruckus, and this is part of the story I really enjoy are these interpersonal type moments. Because, of course, Doom is like, well, I'm glad you're all here now. It's time for me to tell you what to do. And everyone's saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who made you leader of this outfit? And yeah, Doom's like, well, obviously, you bunch of numbskulls need me to lead you. And everyone's like, no, Doom, we can't help but think that you're going to betray and murder all of us at any any moment in time. He's like, yeah, I guess yeah, you kind of got me there. And Captain America, being the Captain America that we all love, he's the one who steps up to Doom and he's like, nah, not going to happen. I mean, granted, anyone else would have, but it's giving Cap that moment to shine. And you got to love that. And of course, Doom, I hate to use the word again, but I do like the word. He acquiesces. Gosh, isn't this just the most intelligent action figure channel out there? Doom acquiescizes and says, okay, fine. You guys, Captain America, Warlock. It's, it's Adam Warlock, actually. He's like, Warlock, you can lead this merry Marvel band of marching mutants or whatever they call them. And I'm just going to tag along. And uh, I definitely will not betray you at a moment's notice. Honest. Even if infinite power is within my grasp. Totally not going to do that. I'm definitely going to do that. Then we get quite a harrowing little splash page as Mark Spector, Moon Knight, watches New York burn to the ground. <laughs> That's where you realize how high the stakes are here. And we get the nice little appearance of Moon Knight because he doesn't join this team. I guess he was so off on the fringes that the big A-list heavy hitters weren't like, hey, what about that crazy guy who punches people? Ah! They didn't include him, but we do get a chance to see him and we can focus on his little Marvel legend because you know what? He's got a couple <laughs> and they're pretty nice, especially the Walgreens one, which I love, which has the beautiful pearlescent type armor on there, the different face sculpts and all the little sickles and weapons. Ha <laughs> ha! He's such a good Moon Knight. You've also got more modern ones as well. There was a re-released modern one quite recently, but that doesn't mash my potatoes too much. And then, oh doggy, we got ourselves the Mezco one, which is just... Oh, it's gorgeous. It's so it's just, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous figure. The Mezco Moon Knight has the huge big cloth cape. He's got the kind of Kevlar looking body armor. It just it just looks so so good. It is the best Moon Knight figure available until Revoltek comes out. Because dang it, I've seen these pictures of the Revoltek Moon Knight, and I think I might have to bite on that when he's eventually released. Because that, that just looks... Revoltek have been refining their style over the years. The figures used to look super jagged. They did so many points and things like sticking out all over the place. I was like, uh, it's kind of a fun, interesting style, but I don't dig it. And over the last couple of years, they've got smoother and smoother like Carlos Santana. And now this new Moon Knight coming out, Oh, he looks the bee's knees, so I think I might have to pick him up. In the moon in, in the moon time? Yeah. In the moon time, you're your sport for choice when it comes to moon nights. And we have a nice little character moment between Cloak and Spider-Man, who are very sort of street-level characters. And Cloak's essentially looking around going like, 
I feel somewhat out of place here. And we're going up against cosmic beings and what, what, I'm, what, I'm, I'm having a crisis of confidence here. And Spider-Man being the wonderful, awesome Peter Parker Spider-Man that he is, he comes over to him and he's like, hey, look, dude, I know that you're freaking out a little bit. Don't worry, I'm freaking out too. He has a Hawkeye from Avengers Ultron moment where he's like, none of this makes any sense. I'm a guy with a bow and arrow. This is all bonkers, but you got to get out there and fight. And it's kind of funny because... Cloak does go, yeah, okay, no, you're right, let's let's do this. And Spider-Man has his thought bubble of like, yeah, we're probably all going to die. <laughs> That's kind of like a heroic sacrifice, but also kind of funny that he's like, no, Cloak, don't worry. You you got this, all of us together. Let's let's go do this. We, we're all marching to our deaths. Now we go from the street level guys talking about battle plans to the whole other cosmic level. Adam Warlock and the Silver Surfer are up in the galaxy and they're having a little chinwag with the most cosmically powerful beings in all of existence. We got Galactus, we got the Living Tribunal, we got the, 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 the plant head guy, we've got the, the, the universe, Eternity, him too, we got, we got a, a, a bald dude and a, I, I don't know I don't know the, the, the cosmic people. They they look impressive though. But basically, yes, Warlock's pitching. He's, he's giving them his sales pitch. He's like, we we all gotta pull together. We can't stay worlds apart. The Transformers, dan 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 robots in disguise. Sorry, um, 80s brain kicked in there. Man, I wanna go watch Transformers the movie again. So good. Regardless, yeah, they are all not actually that interested in Warlock's plan. And Galactus in particular is like, nah, in fact, you're wasting my time. I'm going to kill you now. And of course, Warlock manages to avoid that little energy blast. And actually, the Elder Gods of the Universe go, eventually, you know what? Actually, let's, let, let's do this. It seems like Thanos might actually blip us all out of existence. So they all join forces. And that's just kind of a lovely moment. Then, oh my goodness, I, I, I had to laugh. And tell me that you don't see this as well. We go back to the Avengers all planning their battle strategies and Iron Man and Doctor Doom, we straight up get the lady screaming and pointing at the cat meme 30 years before it ever happened. Th there it is, right before our eyes. You're planning on grabbing whatever you can out of this mess and the blazes with the rest of humanity. That is my way. That just... Art imitating life, imitating art. I don't know what it is, but it's uh, it's beautiful. Luckily, Adam Warlock comes back from his cosmic meeting just in time to be like, everybody, calm down, all right? The dad's home. I'll just put this fire out. And then he hears that Hulk and Wolverine are up on the roof. And he's like, ah, oh, geez, I can't turn my back on these kids for a second. We can turn our backs for a second, though, because we see that the Watcher has appeared above Thanos and Mephisto. So even the Mad Titan knows that, ho, 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 this, this means it's on like Donkey Kong. This means it's the end days here. And guess what? I'm going to give him a real end days to enjoy. And we have a couple of Watchers to enjoy. Really, there's only one actual go-to essential Watcher character out there at the moment. And... That's from Select. Select nailed it. They gave us a great watcher and more to the point, they re-released a great watcher. God bless you. Select gave us this watcher, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago? A, a long time ago. And he was going for like 200 bucks on eBay. And then, real smartly, when the Galactus HasLab was announced, Select were like, oh, we still, we still have that watcher mold, don't we? And they re-released him for like 20 or 30 bucks. So that was great. I was so happy to have got that. I heard that they were re-releasing him and I was just about to like pull the trigger on. Actually, no, I wasn't. There was no way I was ever going to spend that much money on the Watcher. But still, I managed to get him for a normal retail price, as many of us did, to go with our Galactus. That was, that was fantastic. And then also for Marvel Legends, there is the Watcher Builder figure. But he is the MCU What If animated Watcher, who still like, he looks... He looks fine, but it's not it's not the Watcher Watcher. If you want the Watcher Watcher, you gotta go for Select. And it's kind of cute that Adam Warlock goes up to the roof to try and stop the Hulk and Wolverine from inevitably fighting, but it turns out they're actually just having kind of a heart-to-heart -heart and some bro moments. And I, I couldn't help but laugh when the Hulk says to Wolverine, you know I like you, shorty, and Wolverine's like, why is that? He's like, because like me, you're a monster. And if I was Wolverine, I would've been like, uh, speak for yourself. 
You're like a ten foot tall giant green radioactive rage machine. I'm I'm just a guy with I'm a bit of a hairy guy. That's call yourself a monster. Jeez. Don't tar me with your brush. Have you, have you seen you? There's some people. And now we have a really fun scene with Thanos where he just goes full petty. It's great. Mistress Death won't accept his offers of affection. So he's like, fine, I'll make my own girlfriend. And he does. And we have Teraxia, which is just Thanos' mental image, perfect woman for himself, which is essentially a female Thanos. And I gotta admit, if I had the Infinity Gauntlet, that's what I would do. No, I wouldn't make myself a female Thanos. I would I would just, just snap myself a, a, a Davina and be like, oh my god, you're so beautiful. It's like that Snapchat filter come to life. <laughs> That would be weird. Would that would that count as that? You, you know what? Let's let's not go down that path. Regardless, Thanos makes his own Teraxia figure. Uh, no, he doesn't make a Teraxia figure. Actually, that, that is what I would do if I had an Infinity Gauntlet. I would just make all the action figures I want. Like, oh my God, Dave has Dave has ultimate power. What's he gonna do? He's he's just made a Clone Saga Marvel Legends wave. Just can't help but feel the powers wasted on him, lads. <laughs> But enough with all the shenanigans, there's no more time for this. The heroes are ready to fight. So the portal is opened and all of the Avengers and the superheroes of the Marvel Universe dogpile on through, kind of like the end of Avengers Endgame. And we see Galactus is there with his throne shrine waiting for them. And quite simply, we can't get along, so let's get it on, because the next issue, we gonna rumble. I love this front cover. Come and get me. The Avengers Endgame movie, oh, fantastic. And they recreated some wonderful scenes and moments, but they, they didn't do this specifically. I, I would have loved a, a bit of a Thanos moment like that. Just like, come get some. But still, this standalone comic cover, oh, it's, it's really cool. And the hero's onslaught goes about as well as you would expect against a nigh omnipotent god. He can literally just, just freeze time and pinky flick them out of his way. But this is where Mephisto kind of comes into the equation. And this is cool. I love these kind of character moments that make sense in the context of the story and what we know about their manipulations. He whispers in Thanos' ear. He's like, yo, this isn't going to impress Lady Death. You have omnipotent power. So just pimp slapping a bunch of heroes that's that's not impressive because there's no struggle for you she's not going to be impressed by that what you need to do is actually take away some of your power cut yourself off from all of your precognitive knowledge and all that sort of stuff just be regular old thanos with a lot of power that way when you beat them you will have actually triumphed over adversity that's going to win her heart and he's like yeah, of course, you're right. Good good thinking, Mephisto. Glad you're on my side. <laughs> of course. So I thought that was a really clever way of sort of nerfing Thanos' power. That was, that was a nice touch. And this just allows us some really cool splash page fight scenes where Earth's mightiest heroes actually can have some back and forth tussles and tumbles with Thanos because he has reduced his power enough that we get a real a real meaty kind of fight. And this this is just great big widescreen 90s comic book action. It's, you, you gotta love it. And of course, true to form during the fracas, Doom is like, right, let me let me get my hands on that gauntlet. So while everyone else is trying to beat Thanos down, he's just trying to get hold of the power for himself, as you would have expected. But also, it, it goes about as well as you would have expected too. Doom gets fried pretty quickly, and the battle, the tide starts to turn more towards Thanos' favor, as if it was ever going to go in any other direction. Wolverine gets a nice little shot in there, shninking him through the chest, but... Come on, it's going to take more than that. And he just, <laughs> he sort of just rips Wolverine up like tissue paper, which on modern Marvel comic standards, he would just shrug that off and regenerate instantly because Wolverine's completely invulnerable now, which takes away any kind of drama from the character. And even if he did die, they could just resurrect him on Krakoa. God, the X-Men comics are awful these days. 
So the heroes begin to fall pretty quickly now, like dominoes, and I highly recommend you read this story yourself because it's really fun to see how Thanos basically takes all of their powers and turns them against them. It's very clever and a lot of fun and a real creative way of taking out each individual hero, ultimately resulting in Thanos just standing triumphant over a whole bunch of twisted, mutilated Marvel heroes. It's, it's pretty cool, actually. So then we have one of the ultimate Captain America superhero. This is why this guy is the best of all of us Steve Rogers type moments with every other alpha level badass Marvel superhero completely obliterated. It's just him and Thanos. And this is the original kind of Avengers assemble sort of moment. Or the, this is his I can do this all day type moment and oh it's so good so even with all the other superheroes dead and the odds not even stacked against him the odds just impossible captain america stands up to thanos as long as one man stands against you thanos you'll never be able to claim victory noble sentiments from one who is about to die and that's the opening that Warlock and the Silver Surfer were waiting for. So while Thanos is distracted, they both attack. They fire all their energy blasts at them. Silver Surfer comes in to grab the gauntlet off his hand and they choke. And Thanos just wipes them out as well. They, they never stood a chance. And I love stories like that where the odds are just so gigantic. It's like, how? How are the good guys going to triumph here? Well, they do still have an ace up their sleeve because Warlock calls in the entire pantheon of cosmic entities and they're going to have a go now. So it turns out that when you have a clash between beings who have literally limitless mind-melting power, when they actually butt heads, it just obliterates everything. So the entire battleground, Thanos' shrine, fortress, everything is just obliterated. Did I say obliterated before? I'll repeat myself. The word is obliterated because that's the only one that's really appropriate. So yeah, everything is just vaporized. However, there are still a few survivors. The first ones being Star Fox and Nebula. Remember Nebula? The, the, the twisted animated corpse that Thanos keeps alive just for kicks? They both survive. Why? Because Mistress Death actually protects them in a little force bubble and they're like, Wow, you gotta <laughs> not only is Thanos not winning you over, you gotta you gotta really hate him to be protecting us. Thanks for that. And this is where we realize why Adam Warlock was trying to keep the cosmic entities out of the main fight. Why he started with the Avengers, because he knew that this much power, it was it was just gonna cause chaos. Like literally rip the fabric of the universe apart. And it is. Everything's going cuckoo bananas now. And also, as they say in the comics, the scavengers are now picking the bones. So Earth, Earth is pretty much boned. Entirely. The Earth is kind of destroyed. It's, it's an ice age there now. And then a portal opens up and Annihilus pours through with the Annihilation Wave. Because he's like, well, <laughs> let's, let, let's see what we can mine out of this, I guess. So, yeah, this, this really is the end game. And Thanos is just having fun now. He's wrecking shop celestials turn up because you know this this is where we're at now like literally gods the the celestials turn up and thanos is like yeah guess what you ain't nothing either i'm gonna send us all through time just for kicks let's fight around the dinosaurs by the way if you want a good dinosaur figure jurassic park line hammond collection oh my god build yourself a savage land or recreate this scene where they fall through time just for kicks because that's how powerful the infinity gauntlet is yeah i love this issue because everything is just going insane Eventually, all of the alpha cosmic power god entities, they all team up. They try to trap Thanos in like a nebula nothing zone. And when he's there, Mephisto pops up and he's like, Psych! I was going to betray you all along! Who would have thought? He tries to grab the gauntlet off Thanos. Thanos is still like, no, I still, I'm wearing it. You got, that's not going to work. So he just obliterates Mephisto. And then Death herself turns up and she's like, well, silently, she's like, Yo, this was never gonna work, pal. I'm just, I'm just not that into you. At which point, all the cosmic deities launch all of their power, everything just unloaded on Thanos. And he's like, that tickled. So finally, with all the cosmic beings laid out, there's just one left. And that's eternity. 
And so Eternity steps up and he's like, all right, look, this this has gone on long enough. Thanos, it's, it, it, it's time to go to bed. And Thanos is like, well, I don't want to go to bed. This is the Infinity Gauntlet here. I'm not going to give you a proctologist exam or anything. Well, maybe I will do because I got the power to do it, Eternity. So he launches in, and now that th th there's no there's nowhere else to go. This this is as high as <laughs> as, as the fights can get. So they're going to get it on, and it doesn't go well for Eternity. No, no, Thanos actually defeats and imprisons Eternity. And you know what he does? What else is there to do? You've just beaten everyone. You are the nigh omnipotent. Bi what, nigh. Omnipotent? Oh, we don't like that nigh. No, let's change that. Thanos makes himself eternity. Thanos transcends this physical body and he becomes this ether galactic entity of eternity. Thanos turns himself into an ethereal, incorporeal god being. And that was his mistake. I love it when a villain's hubris gets the better of them, and this is where Thanos has gone too far. He, um, he jaffared himself. That's what he did. Remember at the end of Disney's Aladdin? Still one of the best animated movies ever made. Jafar gets angry when Aladdin reminds him that the only reason why he has all of this power is because the genie gave it to him. So he's like, For my third wish, I want you to make me an all-powerful genie! Which of course is then his downfall because he gets trapped by the rules of being a genie. Same kind of thing happens with Thanos here. Because he is an incorporeal, ethereal being of godlike energy, that means he can't actually wear the Infinity Gauntlet anymore. Yeah, but someone else can. So this is the wonderful twist where the shambling corpse that is Nebula, this wretched, disgusting, pathetic being, actually has enough consciousness in that brain to see the Infinity Gauntlet. And while everyone else is thinking about whether or not they have a spare change of underwear, gawping up at this godlike Galactus, she just shambles on over and puts on the glove. And her first rule of business is revenge on Thanos. So, bing! I, know, I keep doing the snap. It, like, don't bother adding me in the comments. I know that you don't literally have to snap to make the gauntlet work. It's a gesture. It's a sign of what you want to happen. D don't, don't come at me with that. I know that. People still come at me with that. So, Nebula blips Thanos back into his human form. Oh, well, you know, physical form. And then obliterates everything around him. So he and Taraxia are just floating in the void of deep space. So yeah, that Taraxia is brown bread now. Because Thanos is like, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't actually make you so that you're able to survive in deep space. Ah, kind of, kind of played myself with that one. And Thanos might just be drifting out there forever unless... Someone opens up a portal to save him. Oh yeah, this is a funny little change of scenery now because Thanos goes through this portal and boom, lands in Doctor Strange's living room. This is quite the change of scenery. So the first thing that Nebula did when she had this omnipotent power of the Infinity Gauntlet was to reset everything before Thanos obliterated it all, which is lucky. So Earth is now back to normal. We're good. The, the world has been saved once again. Thanks, Nebula. Good guy Nebula there. So all the heroes are alive and well, they're back on Earth, but they do realize that, yeah, we can't have Nebula with all of this power because her mind is not mature enough to actually be able to deal with this. It's going to destroy her, and in doing so, probably destroy the entire world again. So, yeah, kind of out of the frying pan, into the fire, and damn it, we might actually need Thanos to get out of this. And it is just so funny reading these panels of Thanos and all of the Avengers sat on couches just having a chin wag about what to do. We've gone from this insane reality warping cosmic battle of the of the gods and godlike entities to being sat in Doctor Strange's front room having a cup of tea and talking about, well, can't we actually just sit down and discuss our problems like adults? That's literally what they do. I I love it because that that's what I would have done right at the start. Like, guys, can we all just put the kettle on? and have a talk about this. And Adam Warlock, he actually hits Thanos with a little truth bomb. He's like, dude, you were always going to lose because you can't handle winning. And Thanos is like, "That's what are, you, what are you talking about? And it turns out that Warlock, when in possession of the soul gem, he could understand Thanos' mindset. And he was like, 
you set yourself up to fail. You, subconsciously, you didn't want to win. Why did you turn yourself into an ethereal godlike being? You had omnipotence. You could see the future. You knew what was going to happen. But subconsciously, you couldn't, you couldn't handle winning. So, you know, I hate to say it, Thanos, but intentionally, you played yourself. And what's the first rule of omnipotence? Don't play yourself. Congratulations, you played yourself. And that's quite a revelation to Thanos. He's like, oh, shoot. I guess I never wanted to win in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for wiping out the entire universe to discover that. Luckily, we hit the reset button, but <laughs> you're, you're on thin ice, mister. So Thanos agrees to help all of the heroes confront Nebula and get the gauntlet away from her. So the portal opens, all the heroes pile on through it, and it goes about as well as it did the first time they tried doing that. All the regular heroes are quickly dispatched and they're not killed, but Nebula's like, no, just go over there. I'll deal with you idiots later. But there is still a Survivor Series team of Marvel heavy hitters. So we have confronting Nebula on one side. We got Thanos, Doctor Strange, Adam Warlock and the Silver Surfer. And this sets us up for the final issue. So the final issue, number six, opens not with a fight, but with a chat. Finally, it's like if I had the Infinity Gauntlet and was making people do things the right way. They talk about what they're going to do because they're like, look, Nebula, we don't want to fight you. You've got the Gauntlet. You're all powerful. Let's figure out how to actually go about things. And Nebula agrees to say, look, OK, I'm going to keep the Gauntlet. That's that's the deal breaker here. I keep the Gauntlet. But I am going to set everything back 24 hours. So actually, before where I said the world was reset by Nebula, yeah, actually, I kind of got ahead of myself. She does that then, okay? So she's like, look, I'll keep the gauntlet and I'll reset everything back 24 hours the way it was. So all the dead people are alive. The earth is fine. New York hasn't burnt to the ground. Happy days. Boom. There you go. Done. Whoops. Guess what else was the state 24 hours ago? Yeah, Nebula was a shambling corpse. Didn't think that one through there, did you, honey? Luckily, that shambling corpse is still wearing the Infinity Gauntlet, so she quickly blips herself back to normal, but I thought that was quite a nice little trick that could have actually resulted in the climax. I thought that was quite clever, but also that would have been, that would have been a real dumb way for Nebula to go out. But also the 24-hour jump back in time means that all of the celestial god beings have been returned to their prominence and power, and they're going to give it another go. So Adam Warlock and the Silver Surfer are blasted over to the Soul World, so that's where they are, and in the meantime we get some gorgeous looking colourful splash pages of Nebula and the Cosmic Gods just having a brouhaha. So Nebula actually makes short work of the cosmic beings once again, and it seems that everyone who gets the Infinity Gauntlet just wants to try their hand at sculpting. So she makes her own shrine with the cosmic gods all frozen in a battle pose, which actually does look pretty wicked. If someone wanted to build that as like a Marvel Legends diorama piece for your cosmic display, that would be amazing. Finally, though, the man with the plan was always going to be Adam Warlock, and being trapped in the Soul Gem... Turns out he's not actually trapped. That's where he can come to fruition. He expands his consciousness, his soul, everything about him into an omnipotent being within the gem because that's something he can do. He basically becomes the soul gem. He becomes an elder godlike being himself within the power of that soul gem and he uses that to cause disharmony amongst the other infinity gems. They all start to rattle and roll and just kind of short out a little bit and that causes this feedback to ripple through Nebula and the glove just falls off her hand. It's a bit anticlimactic really. And then the whole thing kind of ends with a game of kill the guy with the ball. Because then we do have actually pretty much the same ending as Avengers Endgame. It's a race to the gauntlet. Doctor Strange opens up a portal so the other Marvel heroes can all pile through. So Thanos is running towards the gauntlet. They dogpile him. It's kind of amusing where Thor just yolnears him in the back of the head and he face plants in the ground. Everyone is just bum rushing for the Infinity Gauntlet. And ultimately the one who gets it is the one who you could say was in control the whole time. Adam Warlock. Boom! Finally, we got a sensible person with the gauntlet. And that does essentially bring the conflict to an end. Adam Warlock, he's like, hey, I'm not here for the grand power. I'm just here to make sure that you doofuses don't obliterate the universe. So guess what? 
No, no one's gonna have this. This, this is mine now. And guess what? I'm not even gonna use it to make anything cool. I'm not even gonna make a female Adam Warlock sex doll like I know that everyone else would do. All right. It's one of the reasons I'm not gonna let you perverts have this. So Adam Warlock is like, okay, we're done now. But some people still have a few things to answer for. Mainly you. Thanos, you you kind of been a pain in my ass recently. But before they can even deal with him, Drax is like, no way, the Thanos is mine. So they have a bit of a tussle and a rumble, which is broken up. And then actually it's Thor who gets the last hit on Thanos, just winding up and Mjolnir smashing him out into deep space. Thanos is done for now. Okay, so that's how the Mad Titan gets taken out at the end of this story. Hey, it, it had to happen somehow. And the rest of the Marvel heroes just, well... They don't really have a choice. It's like, well, we could fight Warlock for the gauntlet, but then, then, then what? I mean, first of all, he would just murder us all if he wanted to. And secondly, like, who's actually better to wield it? It's, it seems like Warlock probably has altruistic intentions. So, yeah, okay, everyone, do you want, do you want to call it? Yeah, just back to mind for tea? Yes, which you can't blame them. The heroes must be like, look, can we, we? It's been six issues. Can we? Can we just? Can we just call it now? So they do. Uh, they get blipped back to Earth. They can finally rest. But Warlock's work is not done. So we have a final wrap up with Warlock and the Infinity Watch. Is it the Infinity Watch? Yeah, that's what I'm calling it. Pretty sure that's what they call it too. So Warlock, along with Gamora and Pip the Troll, blip themselves six months into the future to a distant planet where they find a farmer. And this is where Thanos has retired. Essentially, we see the great iconic image of Thanos' armor decked out on a scarecrow. And we see that Thanos has... he's decided to call it quits. So Warlock confronts him and he's like, yo, you've, 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 you've caused a lot of bother, my friend. And Thanos is like, hey... I hold my hands up on that one, you know, my bad. And ultimately, they agree to part ways, and that's going to be that until the next mega crossover. And we finally finish this series with the sun setting on a grateful universe. As Thanos in his little farmer's robe sits on his porch step, and he's like, damn, that was a fun six issues. And folks, that does it for Infinity Gauntlet. Wow, I'm just I'm just cranking out all the epic <laughs> epic length videos, but I hope you enjoy them. I'm I'm having a good time doing this. I'm really doubling down on this channel and watch well, as if I haven't been doubling down on this channel for the last three years, but I feel like now we're really we're kind of we're kind of cooking on gas. We got that that model behavior kind of mojo is working, and I'm just enjoying this so much. So guys, thank you so much for enjoying this with me. If you want to enjoy it even more than you can do by going over to patreon.com forward slash display model behavior toss a couple of bucks my way you can recommend what story you would like to see done with as told by toys uh, or just toss a couple of bucks my way and 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 sit back and smile as the sun sets on a grateful universe that being the model behavior universe oh that sounds like a gross corporate statement hey come be a part of the model behavior universe but guys thank you seriously so much and uh yeah i guess that's it go and join the facebook group too i keep forgetting to plug that the facebook group's awesome that's one of my favorite little model behavior creations it's such a fun community everyone on there is awesome how do i know that because i have an admin moderator team who police it with a ruthless efficiency gosh Shout out to those guys. Thank you so much. So gang, thank you for watching this gigantic video. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior.